We can listen. Yeah, they can listen. I want them to be part of it, contribute yeah, so, so to Paul it. So Paul was saying that. Um, that again. Okay. Greetings to everyone out there. Who do I have? Good afternoon, Elder. Welcome, Sister Anna. Hello, Who else? Pastor Jules. Wow. Nikki? Go ahead. Thank you. Welcome. We are, we are discussing some of the offices that are being held by people in the church and whether there is an ordination for some of these offices or the office can be used without ordinations. But there are many new ones coming in, day in, day out. But where is it coming from and who authorizes it? We don't know. Like we have many people coming out, I'm an apostle, but an apostle is one that is sent by the Lord. So to tell me you are an apostle, you need to show me proof of the apostle because God bearing them witness with diverse signs and wonders. Somewhere down there, somebody going to require more than words of mouth. So neither can another man make you Christ's apostle. They can make you his apostle or their apostle, not Christ's apostle. So then, uh, what's the difference between the apostle and the apostleship? Because the apostle is uh, the person, the person, but the apostleship is the office, right? So what governs that? Then? Can an apostle be um, a, a, a leader of one church? An apostle? Yeah. To to my understanding, an apostle is more like an evangelist. He's not stationed over any congregation per se, but visit all what he established and going around over it. But as of to station on one place. So you would say that the apostle plan churches? More or less, that would be correct. I planted, another man watered, the Lord bring the increase. That's, that's their work. I can't deny it. I, all I said, only when I see proof, I believe. But I'm not going to engage and say the Lord didn't send. If the Lord sent you, show me the work of the Lord coming from you as proof. Because God bearing them witness. Wherever he send them, he bear them witness, according to Hebrews 2, with diverse signs and wonders. So it, it may be, I'm not going to say, Peter, you're not an apostle. But I'm going to say, Peter, you need to show proof of your apostleship. As Paul said, the proof of my apostleship is upon you. You have seen what I've done in your presence in the name of the Lord. My miracles, my this, my that, all have been done openly before you. So you want to deny me, you deny Christ, because you bear witness of that. Should not, should not be... Well, yeah, and if the Lord didn't send them, they have to be called by God. Are they just sending rope in the church? It is a common feeling that we want to do things for God and we are called by God. If God called you, He used you. But if you want to do things for God, you must meet approval from God. You'll have to prove yourself. Yeah, by the time God called you, you already approve of you. But the person who wants to work for God has to prove himself to God that he is qualified or worthy of it. So that would be two different looking at it like that. And then a pastor has to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I would not say that. No, I didn't say you say that. I did that. No, I would. I mean, okay. By saying I did not say that, I say that may not be the case in all instances. If you were sent to do something by God, that would like like. The prophet of old, most of them was not engaged full time. But the word of the Lord come unto me and say that when I finish, I may be off a month or two. But then God need another messenger. The word of the Lord come to me, go in evil, go this, go that, deliver that message. I am around doing that, but not engaged full time most of the time in doing it as a daily task or a daily duty. You know what I look on what I look at is that um, I, I, I remember, you know, when um, they were having problems in the church. Is we are in Six. Um, um, 
to, to feed the people. Act six. Okay. Um, the head was the ordain. Is ordain? Uh, uh, Choose. Uh, select people who only to feed the people. And they choose men that fill with the Holy Spirit. Just to feed the people. My dear, if you go do that today, you find nobody, you know. Eh? I don't hear. <laughs> if, if you go back now looking for this, you ain't finding nobody, you know. With Especially the using Spirit. the word fool. With the Holy Spirit. Fool. In trouble. We were in trouble a long time. Especially um, especially Stephen, I think, was one of them that were ordained. I know. After they had no they problem had finding seven. If you... If you have no problem finding seven, it is saying there's more than seven, more than 12. You just pick, 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 pick. Otherwise, it will take you some time to figure out who's next, who's next. But they had no trouble finding seven. And all seven proven themselves that they were capable and more than capable. But they were neither called to evangelize. They were neither called to do that, but for the distribution of the food at the table. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. okay. In other words, what the apostle uh, what says those that are called to be an apostle? That's what. That's why I brought that up. If they're just doing food and they have to be filled with the Holy Spirit, what about an apostle? Don't, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're more so. I, that's we have more apostles of men today than of God. So what you're expecting from them they ain't going to be the same as what if you come from God. There's more apostles made by man today, the apostles of man, not apostles of God. That is not what? I... Yeah, you know, okay, let's do that. The Lord Jesus Christ, after his moment of prayer in the book of St. Luke, the Bible said he called his disciples unto him, and out of them he chose 12. He didn't make disciples out of all the apostles, out of all the 70. Out of the 70, he chose 12 and called them apostles. When they were not on mission, they were mostly called disciples, pupils, students of Christ. On missions, they would be apostles. So most of the time, see the word apostles, you would see it as one sent on a mission, sent to do something. It's under that banner, the word apostle would show. But regularly, they would fall on, am I not a disciple of Christ? Paul, a disciple of Christ? You may find it over there in the same thing. More like disciples of which both men and women fall in that category. Are you following? Am I? Wait, tell me what you have not gotten good, Brother Ricketts. Not you, Brother Ricketts. Something is struggling with him. Tell me what it is. Was he an apostle, an evangelist? What was he? Philip was one of the 12. At the time persecution arise up in Jerusalem, he run to some area, don't know where he's going, but he escaped in persecution. There he end up preaching when he reached some area. So because he evangelized, he was not ordained and sent. The apostle didn't gather, in, unlike Paul, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work which I have called them, save the Holy Spirit. Philip didn't go through that. Because of the persecution in Jerusalem, he left and ran to Samaria, but there his work was caught out for him. God that use him from now to turn the people of Samaria to God. But he didn't go there as an evangelist. No. When he reached there, he started to do the work of an evangelist by evangelizing. No. He was not sent by God either today. Well, let me not say he was not sent by God. Because God knows how to drive us to the four corners when we're playing lazy. We ain't going nowhere. He light the fire and have you running. <laughs> and you end up where you, where you don't want to go. God is very good at that. So when it comes to him, I would not put it for him. That, that, because the persecution arises. 
But all the apostles stay in Jerusalem. Why the others had to run? The Bible said the apostle, all of them run except the apostles. Go, you all stay one place. I told you, go into the world. All of you stick there. They have the Gentiles there. They go. But when the persecution arrives, that one go there, go there, go there. Message spreading. That's it. He knows how to do that. Very good at that. It, it is not an easy thing. I take, for instance, you find some people calling themselves shepherd. You can't come to Elder Jules and say, I'm a shepherd and don't have no sheep. Can't give me that story. I'm telling you, no, you're still a brother. You'll be a shepherd. You don't have a flock. You don't have nothing. You can't be a shepherd. You're misrepresenting yourself. What's the difference between a pastor and a shepherd? A pastor and a shepherd is almost the same. Or rather this. A pastor, he's a pastor because he pastors the flock. He oversight them. He's there to nourish them, to feed them, to take. Shepherd the same. Lead his sheep to green pastures with a rod and a staff. One to chasten them, straighten them up. One that he lean on as he go on. One that he sings the song and they follow. One his voice they recognize and do that. So a shepherd and a pastor would fall in the same category. So the, the, the pastor stays in one location or he is supposed to go and plant churches. He can be rotated. He can have more. I mean, when the Lord gave us the ability, one he gave two, one he gave five. Like those he gave that went and traded. So you came in always singing, and within two years you were a preacher. And the next two years you find preacher healing and that. And then another time, because you continually investing in the work of the ministry. So you expand in yourself, end up in doing more than what you started to do. When you started, you were shy. Somebody had to push you to sing. Now you're bringing people in to sing. So there is the increment in knowledge in the ministry of the Lord. So you're not going to be stagnant. You're going to keep moving from one to the other. And when you believe where you are, somebody could hold it for you. There's another opening somewhere you could start. You're going to move. But you should never forget where you started or your original flock. Could you use the mic, please? Anybody out there have any question you would like to ask? Feel free to do that. We're waiting. Go ahead. Well, uh, I'm, I'm moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, we know that the end is near. The end? So all that is happening, we know Jesus is at the door. Um, Believe me, yeah. I don't know that, you know. Huh? Believe me, I don't know that. You didn't know that? Who can know that? Well, idea? So things going on now, we know he's about to knock. When he left the year 33 AD, he said, I'm coming quickly in Revelation. When he closed it, you'll like come quickly. My reward is with me. Yet a little while he shall come, will come. Even the Apostle Paul thought he would see the return yes. of the Lord. 2,000 years later, yes. it still yes. ain't happening. But, but anyway. So like I said, that's the best we teach that. Then we tell people he's not coming back again. Because it might be bad. You might go back to the world and die in your sin. So it's rather we secure you in the Lord. But as of whether anybody has a guarantee that the coming of the Lord is within a week, two weeks, a year, that and so on. We could see a lot of sign fulfilling, but there's a lot yet to be fulfilled. And if he has to come at the end of their fulfillment, can't measure time. We know, as I said, I know the end is near. Mm -hmm. yeah, it could be one, two thousand years, or it could be two weeks, or two. It could years. be a half day with the Lord, <laughs> could be which, which is going to be five hundred years. Um, he said. Um, I, I remember I read somewhere in the scripture <laughs> here, somewhere in the scripture here, we were referring to persecution of Jews in like in Jerusalem, to the mountains, AD 70, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. That the same thing you're taking is, is, is the same thing pertaining to us now. That we should, we said to get out of the city and go to the countryside or the mountain. Three questions was asked in Matthew 24 and Luke 21. Tell us when shall these things be? Mm -hmm. Tell us when shall be the end of the world. 
and te three of them. What shall tell us what shall be the sign of thy coming? Tell us when these things are going to be AD 70, and tell us what is the sign of your coming. So three questions was asked. We summarize them in that chapter, but they are to be divided by the minister or preacher, saying this is after that, that comes first, that's the middle, and that's the end. Because in there, it contains all three. Only some people mix all the three of them, and that's not the truth. AD 70 had a cutoff date. And then what shall be the sign of thy coming? When you see this, you see this, you see this. When shall be the end of the world? Heaven roll back as a cloud, X, Y, Z, end of the world. So it's cut off into three parts, not the way people put it. Because I don't know if down here, like we up that side, we hear so much about, you know, the coming and some of them are said to prepare, to, to be ready, to make, not only ready with the heart, material ready. And you may hear he say, all these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet. Not yet. <laughs> so don't worry about things like that. Just what must be, he will lead us. live for the Lord. That's all. Live for the Lord. There's a lot of things evil men will have to do. There's a lot of prophecy that has been fulfilled. There's a lot of them that has not been fulfilled. Most people are looking at the Jewish nation for a time peace. They must be regarded, regarded together. Zechariah 12, this, that. There's a lot of people who are looking for these things from the Jewish nation who has a promise from God. But then what if God chose not to do it that way anymore? Like in Malachi chapter 4, when the prophet Malachi closed, he said, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great day and notable of God. So the Jews looking for Elijah before Christ. So his disciples say, Master, why the Jews saying Elijah must come before you? He said, they are right. But Elijah come already, and they don't know. So they're still looking for Elijah. But Elijah, they already, they already do for it to unto him what was written, and they're still looking for him. The Lord turned the whole thing around. So the way they were expecting Elijah, he didn't come that way. So they still believe up to today, Jesus cannot be the Messiah because Elijah have not come. Or direct us or something like that. Because people is filling up barrels and... Ready and ready and waiting. Not waiting to be ready. Ready and With waiting. For what hour you think not... The son of man. Oh, man. And what if the son of man don't come and you die? That's the end. <laughs> That's it. What if the son of man don't come in a hundred years but you died? What would be the end if you was waiting to be ready? Matthew 24. Mark 13, 33. He said, well, he said. That's what he did. He, he said, take heed yeah. and watch. And pray, for you know not when the time is. Mm -hmm. That was referring to his coming. Mm -hmm. But billions and billions of people already died after that saying. A year's a run. And uh, it's still not coming yet. <laughs> you have seen? So those he spoke to in those days, they was expecting at any time he would come soon. But see how far it is. More than 2,000 years. And the amount of people who died already. But whenever the time comes, he comes for you. That you don't know, we don't know our time when, is, when it is. But we must always watch, praying, waiting, ready. When he calls you, he comes for you. Your time comes. But his time in coming in the physical aspect is not yet. But our time does come. So we must always be ready. Because we do not know, what, he make it clear, because we don't know when the time is. Now, whether his or ours, we don't know when the time is. He said, okay. the good man will come. You are the house. And he'll come any time. And in his house. The thieves, if the, if the good now, man you are, the That's what he said. He said, watch, therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh at even or at midnight or at cock crowing, mm -hmm. or at, in the morning, 
least when he comes, suddenly he find you sleeping. Always ready because we are the house. He come for his house. Anytime, that's how I look at it in, in the other side. Now we may look at it when he comes physically, but our time, we do not know when our time will be. And we are the house. What do you call you? Call for you. So we almost always be ready and watching. Our time must always because we don't know when we, he will come for us. The, the so scripture, I look at it in two phases. The Bible on a whole is loaded with suspense and surprise. To the apostles and the Jews, the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And here we come to AD 30 telling them, I'm going back. What's going on? Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? But I thought you came for that, but you're telling me you're going. <laughs> you know, all they were looking for, he fight to the Romans, take over the empire, and give it back to the Jews, and they feel good. They try to make him king for that purpose, so he could destroy the Jews and give them. But that was not what he meant. His kingdom he was not of this world, not of the flesh, and not that time. But the writing, the words which they, they understood it wrong. They put their own application to it, and therefore they were disappointed. It's still like that in many places today. Um, like, like the, the time is coming now, the one world order, order and all that, you know, the whole thing about it. That's what people is preparing for because the, like Revelation 12, 13, 14, they're not able to buy and sell and all these in, things and the question in the year 13, us, that's what I'm really asking. in the year 13, 40, I think. Pope Leo issued a medal. His picture on one side, and at the back of it, he said, the world is my seat. Leo died on long gone. He don't get that seat for the world. Mankind have been trying to unify the system for a one world order. It cannot happen until he that let it is let. Thessalonia. It ain't going to happen until he get out of the way and say, now is the time for the fulfillment. God is giving you space to do that. It ain't going to happen. Man will prepare. They will try all what they do. They, they tried all kind of money. They bring the euro. You're going to succeed. They bring all kind of card. They bring in cashless society. Not until he that let it is left. And it's out of the way. Until, until then. Thessalonians 4. Until he that let it is let. Until it's be taken out of the way. Then the freedom will be given to them. Which will mark that same he. But right there shall be destroyed by the brightness of the coming of the Lord. But you're not going to see the Lord return if he's not in office. Because he must be destroyed by the brightness of his coming. Ah, they don't know prophecy. They don't know prophecy. They all, they all, all, they do is, all they do, they're trying to perfect the system. The Illuminati have tried. Those before have tried. You have a greatest problem today to figure out whether the Illuminati create the Roman Catholic Church or the Roman Catholic Church create the Illuminati or the Freemason. You hear the names of all the big ones, but they all are united as well. So which one of them we are concerned about? We heard about a powerful movement of the Muslim, but yet it was said it was created by the Roman Catholic. And in honor of that, when Muhammad gave birth to his first daughter, he called the daughter Fatima, one of the great image of the Roman Catholic that they worship. Who are they? What do, what do we do? We listen to everyone, some lie to us, some tell us the truth. Disregard them and take heed to the word of God, because they are not telling you the truth. Huh? As I said, it's in a lot of the countries right now. How bad? Some, how some, bad would that be? How bad would that be? Since you bring it up. That's, that's when we're supposed to go to the mountain and, 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 and the countryside the, and plant our own. The pastor lie. 
Raise our own little chicken. That teacher lie. Don't do that. You think at that time you can go and plant chicken in the garden and nobody will come and steal it? Low and lawless, lawlessness is out there. Government hunting you down. You think police will protect your chicken? <laughs> that, picture, that picture don't know what you're talking about. Who's going to protect you? They are the one after you. You are hiding in caves and in mountains. What chicken can you grow there? What garden could you grow and go in it every day? And they would not disturb it and take it from you. Say that again. Mama, it's not... Listen to it. In the midst of the mark of the beast, in the midst of the persecution, there will be pastors out there. If any man worship the beast or his image, the same shall hurt. There will be the preaching still going on. I want you to look at it like that, not what they're telling you all. In the midst of all this persecution, the third angel message will be echoing loud. Any man who worship the beast or his image or receive the mark, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Strict warning going to them. So what may well the people believe everybody go run away? Why would they do that? So who's doing the preaching? Who's out there? And now they're going to change it. Um, now they're going to come up with the Sunday law and all of these things. The Sunday law has been on our books since 17 something. Yeah. It was an abomination to open any rum shop on Sundays. It is still there. These days here, Good Friday, you cannot sell rum here until sunset. None of the grocery stores or anywhere cannot sell liquor on Good Fridays. So they, it's there on the book. They have not exercised it. The fact that it's on the book, but they never abolish, neither take it out. When they're ready, all they do, they enforce it. It's not something they're trying to do. It's there already, waiting for the right time or the right setting. It's been there. Well, the right in your uh, revelation said, you can neither buy or sell. You don't have enough. You can handle in the forest. It is so, because um, it will be a cashless period coming up soon. I don't know. Soon. So how would you buy? How would you? You don't have to buy. You can't pay tax. You don't have to buy. Can... What are you doing with it? I just want to it, know. It, it, I just want to know. Okay, okay. What, you, what you're doing would take about what? Maybe two weeks of prophecy revamping. The Bible spoke about 538 AD when the church would run into the wilderness. It is strictly said God nourished them there. Okay. I believe that too, Elisha. So why do we worry? God just... nourished them there. Has it not been said when Elijah appeared to, what you call him again, and said, go tell your master that I am here? He said, no. No, no, no. When I go and tell him and he can't find you, he'll kill me. Have you not read how that I saved them in the camp by this or that? The same person he appointed to kill them, hide them in caves and Twitter. Let us not sell our God short. So because of the fear. when that time comes. Always. And I might not even live to see it. So why do you worry for what I might not live to see? <laughs> so... Somebody have a question? Okay, go ahead. Come on, excuse me. Come on, let me hear you. Huh? Sister who? Sister? Go ahead. This pastor is very scary. Day. Is better scary day addressing? Oh, hello, may I ask the name again? Uh, Sister Scary. Sister Scary. Jamaica? Yes. Okay. Antigua. <laughs> or... Uh oh. <laughs> oh, that's you there? My yes, apology. My apology. <laughs> Tell that you know. Yes. Um, I've been enjoying the studies. Um, even though I have not been able to be on live for for the past few weeks. I have been re rewatching them on YouTube and it's really I really enjoy them. So thanks for that. Thank you very much, um, So where's yeah, Brother where's Brother Kelvin? He's there with you? Um, he's visiting us, so that's not well. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. Um, I have a question based on what the sister was asking about. Um, because I was, I'm one of those who believe that the whole notion of us running to the hills and the mountains during the end times, that it doesn't make sense because if we look at the technology that's existing now with satellites, 
that you can use from your home on Google Earth to find your house. That there is nowhere that you know, nothing we can do exactly. except trusting God to hide our to hide us. So building in the in the in the mountains can, and the caves cannot save, save us or protect us from the the amount of information and the amount of technology that's out there. But we have to trust God. You are right so I because that. I am all the way here. If America wants to know where I am, there's a chip in my passport that will tell them exactly where I am, or where the passport yes. is. Yes. All American well, passport I... contain the chip. They can find you anywhere you are around the world. So where do you ask? Yes. Notice one of our favorite scripture, my sister, is Matthew 24, 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. So where is the runaway? Where is the famine? Yeah, <laughs> the I gospel is to be preached for a witness and then shall the end come. Where will be the cessation of preaching of the gospel? Yes, Elder Jules, but I, my, my question is based on Daniel, in Daniel uh -huh. chapter 12. There, this one scripture has always been puzzling me when it talks about um, Until, like from, 1,290 like, days. Yes, so blessed is he that waiteth and cometh. That, that, 2003. Oh, God, that, that's another two-week study. Your reference in Daniel 12 is, it can cross Daniel 9.27. It can answer to Mark chapter 13, 34. It could answer to Matthew 24. The problem is, whoever is doing the calculation is doing one big mistake, the mosque of Omar. The mosque okay. which they believe gave them the starting point of the 1,290 that lead to the 1,335 may not be that mosque of Omar. For instance, in order to do that, we have to establish the Mosque of Omar on the temple site of Solomon. And then, whether it stood the test for an abomination that caused desolation, in order to mark that scripture and fulfill it. But second, if it can be proven where that temple is was not where the site of the original temple, then calculation go vain. So the abomination that make it desolate. What is it? Is it clear what it is? Believe me, my dear, we have three of them. We have one in the days of Antiochus in chapter 8 of Daniel, chapter verse 14. Unto 2,300 days then shall the sanctuary be claimed. When Antiochus Epiphany became king in 168 BC, he offered swine flesh on the altar and polluted. You go to First Maccabees chapter 1, verse 5 to 8. That's where we get the feast of dedication. The Maccabee brothers cleanse the sanctuary, purge it at exactly 1,200, 2,300 days. It became literal, not prophetical, because it says evening and morning. So it cannot be calculated as prophetical, but literal. So exactly 2,300 days from 168 BC, when Antiochus Epiphany did that, was the exact time the Judas Maccabees cleanse the sanctuary, and bring in the Feast of the Dedication, which the Jews enjoy today. That may be the second. Some claim it was the Roman invasion in AD 70. In AD 68, there was a cessation when they flee to Mount Pele and escape the Roman persecution. Then the Romans came in, break down the temple, and set up their own image, the bust of Caesar and others, in that place before destroying it. Some say no. Some say there's another one that happened in AD 600 and something by Mohammed. That's the one always remaining in question. Mohammed didn't finish mm -hmm. the temple. Mohammed didn't live to see the end of the temple. So who finished it? There's a lot to talk about it. Is it that same temple? Because we have five mosques of Omar in our world today, located in different places. Which one would they put the measuring rod that they are using of 1,335 years on. And anyway, I think I gave yeah, you um, another question. I could, ju I could just but, let it flow because it's very yeah. clear already. So okay, I, I have ahead. another question. Uh, yeah. um, concerning the return of the Jews. Uh -huh. There's a lot right now out there concerning the Jews. You know, you have 
right now, well, in our church, I guess there are some who believe that the Jews are black people and some people think that the Jews that are Jerusalem are not the real Jews and all those things. So what would you say to that, the return of the Jews? Do you think that that has already taken place, that that mass return has already started to take place? or My sister, yeah, so. we don't have a clear history of the black people. To every writer who came from Marcus Gavi down is missing something. Somebody adds something to it. It is assumed that the, the, the Jews, the black Jew, assumed that they migrated in the days of King Ahasuerus and Cyrus. Cyrus, not Ahasuerus. He came after 126 provinces from India to Ethiopia. He opened the world for all Jews to migrate. There they flee. David wrote it in his Psalms. When the Lord bring about the captivity of Israel, we were like men that dream. One day we go to bed, sleep in bondage, wondering whether they're going to beat us. Next morning we get the proclamation, all Jews are free. No sword, no fighting, no gun, no spare, no begging. They are free. And he gave us freedom. Not only that, he promised to give us money to go and build back our temple in Jerusalem. That started there. The history of our own people. Some is saying we sell our people in bondage. Some is saying those they sell were Jews. And others are saying it was not so. The European came and take them away. Now you look at the European division from Belgium, Congo, which is IA today, Belgium, Germany, France, and all the European nations who divide, except Ethiopia. They couldn't do nothing with Ethiopia. Couldn't touch it. All of them that they claim they colonized comes with a different history. Which one should we believe? Should we believe that the Jews was only in West Africa? There is no truth to that. Should we believe all those from West Africa who migrated to the United States or Caribbean was Jews alone? That is not the truth. That is not the truth. Because before the migration started to the Caribbean, there were already black Africans living there. To every place they tell you that they find Carib, Arawak, there was also blacks. Even in St. Croix, where I live, we had a set of black people who were never in slavery. They were there way before slavery. Can we say they were Jews exiled to the Virgin Island and therefore that make all Virgin Islanders black? The history is complicated. There may be some truth in it, but not all truth. And even it is, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt. It does not make them better than the Gentiles. All going through one door, one channel, one shepherd, one throne of grace. Both Jews and Gentiles. Yeah. That again? Okay, thank you. He says thank you. Only one. Okay. I know that topic is coming on again on Monday, if God's will. I might choose to abstain. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> But I, I'm, right, I'm, aware, I'm aware it's coming up. I have a good mind to abstain from it. So, Pastor Jewel, it's not all black people are Jew. Not all, but we don't know who. Who? Oh, you had to go through a lot of blood tests to find them. No. They, they said in Uganda, they do. Bring down the East KC for me. Oh, you want her to come over here? Bring your chair. Take out that chair there for me. Come. Yeah. Bring your chair close there if you want. We bring down, you could bring down the AC. Oh, well, swing it. Swing it, you go take it out from her. No, swing, but it would not be consistent on her. It would come down up. You feeling it still? Bring it down. Yeah? Okay, fine. It's okay. I can live with that. So it, the truth is, my dear, nobody cannot doubt that. As I said the last time, the children of Israel comprise of four different women. And they also make children with the Canaanites. Rahab the Halot, Canaanite. They mix with Egyptians. Even so, they mix multitude they left Egypt among the Israelites, they were there. They mixed up with the Egyptians as well. Egypt 
established, though they said Egypt comes under Ham, the Canaan division. Canaan, Mizrim, for which came from the Nephilim, the giants, Amalek, Amalek and all it is, came from Mizrim, son of Ham. So this generation, yet we are told in another way, the Philistines live among them, but not necessarily early part of it. And because they live there, many of them was born in the land of the Philistines, um, among Amalek. But as of an original place for the land of Philistia would be the land of the Philistines. So there, there are great changes. The, the nations have been mixed quite a lot in many different ways. We're looking for pure, nothing like a pure Jew. Israel, since it seems more like... Um, Jewry is exclusively white or a white um, providence in the current Israeli society. I don't think that is still accepted because they airlift so many from Ethiopia, recognizing that the blacks well, were also they, Jews. They, they, if we look at what happened to them, they, they sterilized them, saying they were giving them polo shots, but they're actually making them make it impossible for them to um, have children. Typical Jewish behavior. So, but they didn't do it to the Europeans. Typically, so in, in the days of the 12 tribe, they took an action against Benjamin that in not giving them their daughters for wife. The tribe of Benjamin was perishing and died. They went to another tribe, kill all the men, take all the outside women and bring them to Benjamin to keep the tribe going. Um, Typical in, Israelite. Yeah. In, in, in um, 1967, a lot of blacks left um, the USA and when they're using the law right of return because they believe um, their ancestors were Israelites. It was fine, but by 1970, they changed the law and says, you have to prove that your unsure documents that your mother was a Jew, which then when no slave could produce that, or no descendants of slave could produce that because your name was changed too many times. Every time they sell a slave to a next master, the name was changed. Every time they divide the family and sell the children to another uh, landowner, the name was changed. So the landowners. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was impossible for any descendant of slaves to produce the document. Not only that, um, all the people that are in the Mona um, from 1970 till now cannot get um, citizenship, even if they serve in the army. They and um, all those who come from Europe, they don't have the problem. But the ones who are dark skin complexion, they have that problem. In fact, 60 of them apply for citizenship that was born there. And they were given 60 days to leave the country. They were born there. They have nowhere to go. They were born in Israel? They were born in Israel. In, 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 in Demona, in the desert, because mm -hmm. they didn't even give them a proper place mm -hmm. or, or, or acceptance. Mm -hmm. So they went in the desert and um, scratched out a living or a society for themselves without any help from the government. Now they're saying you have 60 days to leave the country, to go where? Hey, okay. In the days of David Ben Gurion, that comes before Golden Meyer yeah. in there, they didn't never had that problem because they went to multiply the place, built it up, so everybody was welcome. Now, the argument is going on during the Ottoman Empire, run by the Turks. The place was loaded with Arabs, because Israelite fled, Arabs occupied, generation after generation. So when Israel decided to return, according to the prophecy that is written if you do this, I will punish you seven times more, 2,800 days. You put the measuring rod on that date, it gives you 1912, 1914. The war that started between the Balkan Islands. In which war you get prophecy fulfilled. As birds fly, will the Lord deliver Jerusalem? Then the Turkish army, when they saw the aeroplane coming from General, it was Lord Balfo who sent General Alambe, who they have to rescue Jerusalem. Then the Turks fly. 
So thus Jerusalem was delivered without a shot of a gun. But then from there on, the doors were opened to build up the population for defense. But those who are there believe they now overpopulated and they are trying to keep back some, even the natives. So we're going to have that crap because the criteria they are asking for. But there's one thing that they are falling short of. They never lose the culture or the language. The blacks never lose the culture or the language, though they was enslaved. Their culture is depicting which tribe they come from. And they have the proof of that. So whether it was through wickedness or whatever, I remember in the early days with the tribe of Reuben, Benjamin, when they wanted to prove them, they tried to mingle themselves with you among the other Jews. But there was one problem. They were speaking to the tip of their tongue. They couldn't say she bullet. <laughs> so every time they tried, no, get out. Like the Grenadian with oil instead of oil, making that mistake. Oh, you out. You from Reggie, go back out. So there have always been disparity among the Israelites as far as we study their history from the Bible and we know them. They have been doing that for quite a while. Like as I said, will we know? We don't. We, we don't. Will Israel become holy? No. <laughs> the land of Israel too. So, right. So, so it, it will not be the holy land until the return of Say that Lord. again? It cannot be the uh, holy land until the Lord return. Right? I want to believe that because Joel chapter 2 said, then shall Jerusalem be holy. And no stranger passed through her. So if you say, then shall it be, I mean, it's not. That's, that's as close as I can take you on that journey. Till Shiloh come. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, neither a lawgiver among his people until Shiloh come. That's the blessing Jacob gave to Judah. Now, the other thing I'm looking at, um, Joseph, two sons. Ephraim, Manasseh. Yes. Yeah. We're given the birthright blessing. These two shall be called by and, my uh, name. So this is what is so troublesome. If they receive the birthright blessing, what happened to his descendants? Those two descendants? They are Jews too, but right. they are Egyptian Jews. You can't have Israel without the birthright. <laughs> Say that again? You cannot have Israel without the birthright. You can't be, because in blessing them, he crossed his hand. And Joseph said, Father, no, 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 no. This one is the eldest one. He said, I know. I know it, my son, live it. But he said, these two shall be called by my name. If you want children, go and make yours. But I take in these two. Right. And they are counted among the tribes right. of Israel. Exactly. And not only that, but he gave what Esau would kill him for. That again? Esau wanted to kill him for that. And he gave it to Jacob's son. He gave Manasseh the lesser blessing uh, and it, uh, effectively blessed Ephraim with a birthright blessing. Right? So all that was in Joseph, the, the tooth hanging over the wall and all of these things, that came to these two boys. To his two children. Oh, okay. It's right. like a double portion given to Joseph. Thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. So in, in this case, Israel can't go nowhere without the birthright blessing. It's, let me say that. While Israel received the great blessing from Isaac, it was not a continuous thing all made, you know. When he saw wept and said, Father, bless me. Is there only one blessing? He said, I have made your brother ruler over you and he shall rule. But that's one thing he said. When thou art able, you will break the yoke of his neck. Very good. So when, they choose the, when the Arabs developed, they were not slave to Israel again. They break that yoke. So, so Isa is Edom, right? Edom, the Edomites. Oh, so not necessarily other uh, Arab. But, no. But, right. We know his descendants. Yes, good. the Edomites. Right. Now, but they didn't receive blessing from God that much. No, go ahead. Absolutely. So if that's the case, what happened to the scripture, Gog and Magog, that will come to the Anwal city, the city for a spoil? Okay, you're talking about the children of Japheth the Elder. Very good. Um, Magog, Japheth the Elder, yeah. it, would, it would not really come from that descendant. So, so it, um, if we because are Abraham to, would be from Shem, Japheth would be from the eldest brother of Shem, Japheth, Shem, and Ham, three sons of Noah. Right. So this is what I'm, I'm pointing to the birthright blessing. 
it means that it has to be activated at some point for this city to have all this wealth, uh, all this cattle, all this vegetation, all this uh, um, uh, uh, um, prosperous society, so that they look the, from the North Country and say, we're going to take a spoil. The behavior of Israel caused that. When Esau had kings and kingdom, Israel was still thriving. When Ishmael had established with palaces, kings and all, Israel was still slave, struggling to get out. And these were way ahead of him in riches. Jacob think he was doing something, but a little too good for Esau, for his brother, his twin brother Esau. Esau said, I have more than that. I don't want that. Right. I have enough. Yeah, so he was you well think, you, are you meeting a poor man and give him too good, too cut? I don't want that. I have more than enough. I've established myself with palaces, queens, kings, and all of that. While you're just struggling, you only have 10 little children. You don't even have a big house. <laughs> that is that yeah, way. But, I, but, yet he has the blessing. Right, right. So, so but I'm he saw get a blessing to prosper material. Right. I'm looking in the future, near to the yeah, coming okay. of, of the Lord, okay. right? Because this is Gog and Magog coming into Israel, the unwashed to take us well. I view that as future. If, okay, are you in Ezekiel 28? Yes. Uh, 38. 38? Yeah. Prophecy in Ezekiel 38? Yes. Do you believe the battle of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel is the finest battle? I'm not saying it's the final, but yeah, there it's will in the be future. one. It's in the future. It's in the future. Yeah. And the drying of the Euphrates under the seven plague for the kings of the East, which is China, to yeah. match over it's still in the future. Yeah. So if Russia only had to be the future, then there would not be one under the seven plague. The kings of the East wouldn't find nothing. Am I right in there? Like I said, I'm just, I'm just recalling them. I started that in, since I was 22 years old. And I never let any of them sleep. I keep building it up. Building it up, you don't let them sleep. So as somebody present them, they come back to my memory and I can relate myself to them. Two major we are looking at. Battle of Armageddon. Yeah. What would be the Battle of Armageddon? Well, are there the two Armageddon in our Bible or it's one? the gathering of the nation? So but, gathering all nation to Armageddon? Yeah. That would be the end of the thousand years. Right. So that wouldn't have nothing to do with Russia? Would it have anything to do with Russia? All nations. All, all the earth would be there, not just Russia. Right, exactly. So when people talk about Amagadan and make you believe is Russia, Gog, that, they, got more, they got more to think of. More is coming out of that prophecy than what they're narrowly teaching. So that, that's what I'm saying. It, it be, um... Now let me, let me point out to you. The Battle of Gog and Magog, not Gog and Magog, Amagadan, has nothing to do with the dead. It only has to do with living people at the end of the thousand. Those who didn't die during the reign of Christ, those who would be alive, it has to do with them. Not let, don't let people tell you the dead was resurrected and he gathered all over to do it. I'm to do it. John, who did you see around there? I saw the dead, both small and great. So what happened to the living? I didn't see none of them that was alive. By then, they was already destroyed. When the dead are raised, they are raised to judgment. They are not raised to fight for a season again. They had second resurrection. Those who come back alive yeah, so come alive As you die. mentioned, they were, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, What's the difference between a time and a season? Biblically, time means one year. A season has no limit. Say that again. A period of time would be definition, but biblically. So, so right. So, uh, uh, a time is one year. Biblically, so, prophetically, is yes. The, is a season longer than time? Can be. It can be, or it may be shorter. It could be shorter or longer. No measurement on the season, the length of time. Say that again? Well, not again. We got in the hot sun from February, no, no longer forward here. Well, you never see that before. 
It's supposed to be spring, summer, autumn, winter. But from spring, the sun is hot. <laughs> so, so spring I've caught up by half. December to February is spring. Uh -huh. No matter where we put it, it is. One time we, we believe that winter started December, finish around that. Winter go up to me when they're ready. Forget April. None of, them, none of them stick to anything. Neither spring, nor summer, nor winter, nor autumn. None start to them. Whatever it is, just a period of time. An undisclosed number of time. Say that again. Okay, I come into you. You know what Jesus Christ did to the Pharisees? I think it's John 4. Say ye not that there is yet four months and then cometh harvest. Look on the field. They are already for harvest, but you say it's four months time to come and the field is already ready to harvest. What are you doing? You are late in your calculation because the field now is ready, but you say in, in four months time. What brings that harvest so advanced into that four months upon them that they could not detect it? Is rain, is sun, all of that changes the season. Huh? Well, quite a lot of things that do it. Mankind is trying. Today, the Sahara is blooming because they're drying the Jordan and the Dead Sea to use the water for irrigation to make the desert produce. Now the Dead Sea in trouble and the River Jordan is in trouble because they're pumping the water from them. Jordan empty out in the Dead Sea, but Dead Sea not getting much from the Jordan anymore. Maybe they're looking for the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. Maybe they'll find it. Archaeologist is doing a lot of damage. Sister Scarlett, let me hear you. Yes, I, was just, I, I don't want to take up too much time, but um, I have a question. You said something a while ago that that um, I had. I think I had wrong for a very long time with the Battle of Armageddon, right? So I'm kind of confused. So in from hearing it being preached, right in the church, I've always. It has always appeared to me like the battle of Armageddon would take this before the coming of Christ. That it would be, from what I've been hearing, it's like, okay, Russia and all these nations, when uh, the river of is is drying up for them to prepare to go and fight against Israel and then Christ. There may come. be, yes, there may be one there too, yes, in that great battle I look, between I'm God looking and at Jesus. Joel. So what about Joel? Chapter, chapter two, two or three? three. Huh? Three. Chapter Joel 3, verse 2, when you say you gather that's all true. nations. The older yeah, days come here? You're talking about you the older days come here? Yes, And yes. the spoils shall be in the midst of thee. And I will gather the all yes. nations together to Jerusalem to battle. Yes. That may correspond with, with Zechariah chapter 14. So wouldn't there be a may, war? Be well answered to the king of the east under the seventh plague or the seventh the seven plague or the seven trumpet. So is it seven so seven. okay. So my question is, is there going to be like a war, some great war that will take place to usher in the second coming of Christ? The is, Mama, Jesus Christ will come in war. His reign will begin in war. He will break them to pieces during his reign. It will not end in war, but there will be a lot of resistance during the reign of Christ upon the planet. It's not just coming okay. and as you come, there'll be peace. There will be resistance, as far as the Bible talks about. It. Rule thou in okay. Psalms 110, rule thou in the midst of thine enemy. Then get away, Psalms 110, verse 2. Okay, so, that, so help me out there. So if there's going to come a time based on scripture, is there going to be a time where the nations will gather up against Israel? fight against her and then during that time that Christ will come to their rescue. Zachariah chapter 14. And another question, does, does it have, will that happen only after they say blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord? After the Persian is in Zechariah chapter 12 that that would happen after that. They shall mourn for him as they mourn for their only child. 
But then he said, it by then, I will pour upon them the spirit of supplication, the spirit of that. Then shall they recognize me and mourn. So then will the Lord come to their defense. Whether we could put so it up as, as exactly as Daniel 12, 1 put it, or Matthew 24, at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince who stand up for the people of children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was seen since there was a nation at that time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that is found written in the book. That we seems to be put in together whether Michael would be the commander of the army upon the return of the Lord, as we see in Jude chapter 9 and many other places, or as Daniel introduced him in his ninth chapter, possibility, will it be Christ himself fighting or will it be his army doing that? That's a lot of the things we are thinking of. I mean, I'm opening a lot of questions to come up. <laughs> uh, okay. The scripture says, at that time shall Michael stand, stand up, up for his people. Why the scripture is written like that? What's the difference between Michael and Jesus? Michael is an archangel, C.F. Gabriel. And Gabriel said he's one of the chief. So there's none like Christ in that the position. Bible, I don't know um, Gabriel, uh, the people as Gabriel's people. Yeah. Well, why is Michael's for his people? Why is it that? At that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which stand there for the children of Daniel people. Daniel people. Read Daniel 12, 1 again. The children of my people. Save Daniel. They are the children of Daniel's people. Hmm? Hebrews. They are the Hebrews. Well, what do we call it? Hebrews is more than Israelites. Right? right? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? If Hebrews are children of Abraham, we have the children of Ishmael. We have this that of Esau. We have that of, we call them, Ishbak, Shua, Hidan, Hidan. And uh, what is the other one where, Abraham, where Moses got his wife? Midian. Six children with Keturah. All are Hebrews. Six boys. All are Hebrews. Abraham had eight children, yeah, eight boys. So all of these are Hebrews. Only the descendant of Jacob are Israelites or Jews. So there will be more Hebrew than there are Jews, but not because they are. The children of Israel are the all children. But in Isaac shall it be called. So that descendant became the chosen seed. But if we talked about Hebrews, there's a large amount of Hebrews out there that we cannot talk. Okay, Elder Jules, but yes, does, yeah. it matter, does it matter that um, whether or not there is, because uh, we know what they said in the New Testament, that there is no Jew, no Greek or anything when it comes to Christ. But also the scripture talked about um, the, that um, there's going to be a cut of time for the Gentiles to be saved and then... So call, um, explain that to me, because that's another thing I'm unconscious Blindness about. in God, part this... happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentile comes in. Because the Jews were blinded to give the Gentile a chance to come in. The same way the Jews rejected Christ and were set aside, the Gentiles will reject Christ the same. Maybe they'll go to Muslim, go to Buddhism, go to somewhere else, but they would not want to hear about Christ. So there is a cut of date for the Gentiles to come in too. I'm not saying the arraignment, a few might not flow in, but the vast mm -hmm. amount that was expecting to flow in have a cut of time. As Paul in Romans 11 said, because of their unbelief, you are grafted in. So be careful. God is able to graft them back again. So do not boast over them as though you triumph. They are the natural branch, but you are grafted by faith. So then there will be a day when it will, the door will close for you as it was for them. Are we looking for that? It wouldn't be too long to find another Jews preaching the gospel again, returning to the Messiah, Messianic Jews, preaching that Jesus is the very Christ. Pretty soon you're going to hear a lot of that coming out. And as that starts to come out, so the Muslim will be, be coming out. And so many black going Muslim, Muhammad was better. When Muhammad himself said when he was sick, he prayed to Christ. Hmm. 
How could you be greater than him and pray to him when you see? Anyway. Okay. Buy a Quran if you have to. Get a Mormon if you have to. Get a Talmud if you have to. So when you make this discussion, just wait for them at the corner and bruise them. But they will be coming with it thinking you don't know. <laughs> but you're always ahead of them. Okay. Sister? Thanks. Sister Grace? So here it is, Mama. There is a lot of things the Church of God seven day need to come together. Ignore the religion part. Think about the purification of the true doctrine. And come together, maybe on the one hand, for the sake of the gospel that was contaminated during the 5th century, 5th, 6th century. The gospel suffered quite a lot. And I say to anyone, if your church begins in the 4th century, 5th century, 6th century, it cannot be the true church. Because yeah. during that time, the church was in the wilderness. It was not out there preaching. So whoever gave you that, you come from the Lutheran Catholic, Methodist Catholic, Anglican Catholic. All the Protestant leaders were Catholic. They didn't like the paganism that was existing in the Roman Catholic. So they declare themselves to be Catholic, was even called a Christian. But none of them never keep a Sabbath. The church that they found have never kept the Sabbath. So you tell me they were church of God, I have a problem with that. Church of God has never stopped keeping Sabbath. So we need to go back, figure out what happened, put it in the proper time and space, and say, no, I may not know what happened, but what you're telling me cannot be. Say that again. Never lose the Sabbath. Persecution or not, they kept the Sabbath. They rolled through it. Like England telling you, Britannia rolled through the storm with a gallant victory around her. That's the red, white, and blue flag with Britannia. Never keep. And we have the Star Spangled Banner. But our flag was still there. That was their hope. Through the storm, through the bomb blazing up, our flag was still there. <laughs> our flag was still there. That's the hope. That gave them the courage. We have not lost the battle. Our flag is still there. So they take pride in, in, in their own theme songs, um, whatever we call it. So we have our own still. Hope of eternal life, which God cannot lie, promised since the world began. We got to hold on that and maintain that. No matter what it is, mighty men around us falling, courage almost gone. But hold the fort. Don't abandon your fort. Hold it up. I am coming. Rescue is near. That's all we know. But I'm saying the Rinman Church needs to get back together to enforce, according to Revelation, the things that are left. You may not get everybody agreed, but all those who are Church of God seven day would like to see that. Because many have penetrated the Church of God with different doctrines, using it as a security to protect themselves and not the work of God. You may not get them, but I know you will get many more who wants to build up themselves back to make the Church of God seven day are reckoning force for the end of time. Today, when they talked about Christians and challenges, they may talk about Adventists and all that as though we are not part of it. You hardly hear the Church of God seven day is called. Adventists keep Sabbath. You go somewhere, your religion, Church of God seven day, they put Adventists yeah, behind it. <laughs> That's what we are suffering from because we are hiding. We don't want to come out. I don't care who's the pastor, as long as you're doing the right thing. But nobody wants to give up their position. Nobody wants the second place. Everybody wants to lead. Everybody wants to be Indian chief, no Indian. Well, that's why we are paying for it. That's not what God said to us. We are doing it our own way. So we're paying a big price. But we can be a force to reckon with if we do what the Lord said, his desire to see his people united. If we work on that, the world will respect us.
very greatly. Not everybody to themselves. I'm satisfied with what I do, I this or that. That would be our problem. So the enemy take us one by one. We watch while the enemy, he can kill him as long as he don't come by, but that's your brother. Why don't you want to help him? Yeah. So this, these are some of the situations that are awaiting our history. But I'm saying, the young ministers don't know it. They can't teach it because the teachers don't know it either. They are not exposed to it. So it's as though it's dying. The history of how we get there, how we get there, we have abandoned that. We don't want to know how we get to the United States. We don't want to know what name we were called before. Yet out there, there's a Seventh-day Baptist whose teaching is the same as ours. There are other religions who do not go by Church of God who has the same teaching, same doctrine as we have. Sometimes we don't get the, oh, they are not Church of God, they are, but they are they're teaching the same thing. What about the other sheep I have which is not of this fold? What would you do? Would you close the door on them if the Lord wants to bring them in? What do you do? It's a lot of thought we need to do as ministers of Church of God. If we are working for the Lord, we should work towards the interest of promoting the work of God, not ourselves. When we will learn to do that, we will see changes. I, when I used to live in New York, you go that block, five members there, pastor and founder, six church of pastor and founder, pastor, pastor and founder for what? Eight of you can become one. Every one of you all paying a big rent and there's empty space in that one. Why do you do that? Just a block away from each other. Why do you behave like that? Yeah. Pastor and founder. So if you found the church, then you know it's not the church. <laughs> if you had a founder, it's not church of God. Uh, yeah. Say that again. It's the money. It's easy living, not having to toil. These care not about the souls of the people. They care more about themselves, as Paul said. Whose God is their own belly, their own interest is there. They are nothing about you, more or less. But should we allow ourselves to be dragged in this when we see that? Somebody quote that scripture in Thessalonian early. No, I think it was Pastor Davy I heard from. Because we do not receive the love of the truth to be saved, God send them strong delusion. That's the problem, the love of the truth. It's against me, but it's the truth. I don't like it, but that's what God said. I may never understand what God means. He will tell me one day, he will reveal it, but I'll do what God said. That's the only thing that could save us. That is the only thing. But again, like as I said, sometimes it is sad, but we got to do what is right. So my dear, let me tell you all, there's a lot of unfulfilled prophecy and a lot of people are handling them wrong by mistaking them. A lot of people. There, was, there were great, great things going on two years ago uh, that the COVID vaccine is the mark of the beast. From England, way down, suffer from that. Now that the America finished with it, no mark of the beast again. Should we still look for mark of the beast in years to come? How many Macadabies they have like that? I don't think they completely said it's not. It's still going that it's a prelude too. That's the shame. The Bible spoke of no prelude. That's a disgrace for ministers to do that. And I'm telling them, there is no prelude for the Macadabies in Revelation 30. He shall cause both small and the mark of the beast is a mark of worshipping. He shall cause them to worship not taking a vaccine for a cure. It has to do with worship. Wait when the time will come. You will see the enforcement of the worshiping of the beast. Then you have to worry about the mark of the beast. How could you have a mark of the beast without the beast? I don't think in technicality it is, but there's a but to I mean, why the entire world had to go through all of this hope? When medical card came, Mark of the Beast. 
vaccine for polio, macadibis, chicken pox, all of these, some of them have it like this. Vaccine has been going on since in the 18th yeah. century. But I was never called a mark of the beast. But vaccine that used to happen, it used to, like, England have certain vaccine, America don't have it. You it's think it's a new vaccine they give you? No, it's something they've been... They had it there all the time waiting for you? They gave you the... They gave you the vaccine and say it's a trial. They always say it was not perfect and not complete 100%. You think they didn't know the business they were running on the poor people's health? But, 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 Pastor, they make billions on our health. Yes, and they kill a lot of people as well. Whether it's they kill or they people kill themselves, they know. Well, who chooses? Say because that again? Uh, and a lot of those who died is that those who didn't believe. A lot of those who die is those that did not believe that there was a virus out there killing people. A lot of people I know, people that died from it. They refused to put masks. It, they refused to do that. A lot of them allowed it, leave themselves open. A lot open. of people took the vaccine and they died. Still you die with a vaccine. Pardon? So I say yes, but did the vaccine prevent death? No. You think so? No. The rate of death was still the same after the vaccine but started? We, we don't know the actual truth about how many people. Huh? Because I have people that are dying now that are having heart attacks and, and, and strokes. Okay. And Suppose I went to agree with you. You mean the people who took the vaccine could not buy in or sell? No, no, no. I don't mean that. It's a depopulization. They but want to take isn't that what the mark of the beast is all about? It, buy yeah. or sell? It's no one would buy or sell from you? A part of it it is? They have, they have another vaccine coming out that is more terrible because the other virus coming is worse. Yeah. Then what would we say? The first one was not the mark of the beast. The second is the mark of the beast. Every time a vaccine comes, we call it the mark of the beast. But that's but that's not a US problem, that's a world problem. No, but the law stands as it stands now. Could not force you to take the vaccine. They would observe your right. But the businesses put their laws that you cannot come in or do that without it, but not the Fed. What they will do? Under which flag? Let nobody deceive you. I don't believe that. I'm not saying it's not true. If they are going to bring it in a way that you suspect it, then it's not true. It has to come in undetected. And when it starts, then you will reckon it as that. Prophecies are better fulfilled or known after it's fulfilled. Not before it's fulfilled. The next one. So they plan to bring another one.
Nuclear weapon is out. <laughs> and then the Almighty will destroy them that destroy the earth, according to Revelation. In the schools, our children are happier. Sister, let me tell you how long I've been on that. Our children go to school in the lunchroom and they give them hot dog made out of pork and all of that. They like it, they enjoy it, they eat it until, <laughs> until somebody tell them, don't eat that again, that is pork. But the little children like it, then you think they're going to wonder whether it's pork or not? You know how much of things we go through that school age in monitoring these things down here? But, but with all being said, the what they are teaching the kids, the children now, all this sexual, you can love, you can call yourself, a girl can call herself him. This one can have sex with whoever they choose, and all of this, and they teach it. It begins with John F. Kennedy. When he took out Bible reading and prayer from the school, then we have a generation that know not God. So anything's expecting from them. When you every book that has been printed by man, now Florida fighting it, is free to use in school, except the Bible. No matter the Bible. No matter what the book is about, evolution, they are free to use except the Bible. The day they took off prayer and Bible reading from the school was their greatest mistake. It was the doom of the nation. Many British islands still have what we call religious knowledge. Teaching religion to classes at school. But America, they can even take you to court if you, the teacher, read a Bible to the student. You can't have a dis... So we, we can actually... We can actually figure out how it started, where it started, and uh, John F. Kennedy probably was the first Roman Catholic president we ever had. Hmm? Candy, Sister Candy, you're welcome. Oh, I just had an observation as a Jews. I agree with what you said when it comes to the different churches and everyone wants to be a leader. So as a senior minister, um, don't you think it's, part of that problem can be alleviated if the young ministers are taught before they're ordained? Who's going to teach them? The senior ministers. Like senior ministers, ministers like you. <laughs> huh? The senior, most of the senior ministers don't know. You want well, to try? Ask most of the senior ministers how the church of God get into the island. See what answer you get. Eh? Ask most of the senior ministers how the Church of God get on on the island. See what answer you get. So you may know how far back we are with that. God commanded that we should teach new X Y Z. Paul commanded that we do that. But how much of that we think that is important? A Roman Catholic once said. If they can have a child stay with them up to the age of eight years, they will have them for the rest of their life. Church of God, do not believe indoctrinated their children anymore. No. We law, we grace, not law, grace, grace, mercy. They know nothing about your doctrine. How can they defend it? We've turned the tide around, different from where we started, so, of what God taught us. So that is a major problem in the churches. And a person like you, who know the word and not. My, my sister, for 30 something years, I sit yeah, on top yeah, as general right. overseer till the day I resign. I resign because of sickness of my wife. But I make it as part of every year I had Bible study. Zoom was not available like we have now. 
if, if we had that, maybe it would have continued. But I make it my duty and I travel the islands, maybe five, six islands per year. And all everyone that I go, I did Bible study. Remind them of the foundation, how they start. That was my work. So are you saying that it's biblical to resign from doing the ministry? I never resigned from the ministry. I resigned from the position because what it called for then was traveling and I couldn't travel. So I don't want to be a hindrance in the way of the work. So I said, let somebody else who can do it. What did the Lord tell you to do? No, I may have regretted it, but the Lord didn't tell me, but he didn't ask me to abandon my wife when she need me that probably become that was a difficult decision to make another thing that um i find with the church is that the elderly we don't have this kind of this kind of up another system. I find that we are very self-centered. It's all about us. We don't have that. Well, we have succeeded in organizing welfare department in most of the churches who look about the welfare of sick members, those who are unable to pay their bill. In many areas of the Caribbean, we are able to, to establish. But the funny thing about it, people don't contribute towards that fund. So that fund will really be always too low to do what they want to do. They have it before them, but the vessel, the transportation to accomplish it is money, and the fund is not always available. God pleased with everyone who can contribute and don't. God not pleased with none of them. But if God knows you're doing your best with what you have, you will not be displeased. He never expects us to do what we cannot do. He's holding us responsible for what he know we can do and don't do it. The Adventist Church, Jehovah Witness, Je Jehovah Witness, and all of these other churches, they have this type, type of lifeline within the church. And because, you know, I work in the nursing home and I see how a lot of the people from these different organizations, how they try to help their members and they <laughs> Believe that. If we do what they are doing, we will not be Church of God. They make their members pay a double tithe per week when they're ready. Every month, gather in, gather in offering. If you do that, you will not be Church of God. Because you wouldn't even get through. Most of their members, when they die, they make them pass their property on the church name, leaving their children without if Church of God do that, you will not be a Church of God. To do like them to accomplish what they accomplish will not be right. I understand what you're saying, but I'm telling you what I know about their practices. What caused them to be able to have the amount of money they have on their phone. And so on. Among ourselves, I mean, we may be small, but if each of us contribute a little, it is big. If we start caring for those that do but probably, let's say, for instance, we have some of the Caribbean islands. They barely can make ends meet. Whatever you work for, bills on them will take it, and by next year, you start fresh again. We have areas where we have brethren who could gather together, because if you go down the island and buy a can of sardine, you're looking at two something to three dollars for one. You go up to the States, you get five of them for a dollar in a dollar store. It's macaroni and cheese and all of that. We can put together, send me what you have, we'll send down a trailer. But you divide it between one, two, three islands because I cannot send one to each. If we could coordinate that, there'll be a lot of help coming to the Caribbean among the brethren who are not able without we being strained. We can go to the stores, things that they may have on the shelf that is not being sold. Okay, Even some of them may have a due date, but they said we have 60 or 30 days after the due date. That they could see the due date is to sell them, not to use them. In most cases, some of the stores are giving it out, 
and write down a tax exemption and they are glad because what they give you might worth 50,000, but they could write 80,000. Once you sign it, they would be glad to. That is what we need to organize today. So those who are unable could do this, could do that. We can organize a little gang. Since we are people contributing, we will give ourselves to fasting and praying so we can pray for them. So God give them the strength, guide them and do. We can do that. It's not hard. It can be done. I know it can be done. But you need to get the men together who believe that and start working together. That's the only way you can get that done. Like as I said, I sat down there for 30 years. When I started, I looked at the areas, I look at it. And I said, Michael, you cannot bring people in without a church. So we set up to build one, two, three, four, five churches where they didn't have, those who didn't have toilet to furnish it, those who had that, we did all that. And then we have some fund, we set up scholarship fund. Because I wanted a scholarship fund. I still want it for members who are going. Because I said, hey, if a child knows that after school they cannot go to college because their parents cannot afford, they will not try hard. But if they know their scholarship fund set up by the church, five, six a year, as we can give, they will make an effort because they know where the money coming from for the school. So let's do that. Do you get much help to do that? No, until then it's only an idea. <laughs> until they would decide to put it into practice, it's only an idea that's not going anywhere. But these are the things in the last days we need to do. Reached out. You don't want them to go in back to the world. You don't want the Sunday keepers to take them when they offer them free food. Then you do it. Because it can be done. So it's not, it's not like I said, my heart still yearns. I still feel the pain of many. I've never given up the work per se and say that I will never go back to it. The word never. You cannot resign or retire. Retire from the Caribbean. We use the word amaratus. A minister was incapable of performing their task or duty. We declare them amaratus. We use them to do baptism class, teaching and counseling to the church. They may not be effective in going up and down or do that, but there's something else they can do with their experience. They can counsel the young ones. They could do X, Y, Z. You put a Maratus to work. You don't have to cast them aside and say, you too old, let a young person take over. That's not the will of God. As we were talking about concerning the history of the Church of God. You know, so that um, younger members who come in have something that, uh, as a reference point. It's your, you need to know. You need to know. That's what I've always believed. They need to know where they are coming from, who was involved in the ministry, who was doing this, who were doing that before, how they survived, where are they now. We may not even know where they are. I, I remember we had George S. Thompson from Jamaica. No, no popular. Although they believe he killed himself by overwork and so on. Sister Thompson was still alive. I don't know if she passed. And so on. Because the fact is, if there's a baby to offer, he must do it. The baptism to do, he will travel by train by that for two days to do it. And you're going to kill yourself. I don't have to be you. They have other ministers, they let them do it. You're general overseer, but they have other people who can. Why do you have to do that? You're going to kill yourself with that. But they too contributed a lot to make the ministry what it is today. And if you hear that they are in a home, they are home, they don't have an income, it should be the duty of the church to reach out to them right. because they have done their contribution. Right. Save the Apostle Paul. It is good that if the Jewish has contributed unto you the spiritual thing, that you should contribute back to them the material thing. That's how it's supposed to go in the church of God. But that also I've lost. We have lost sight of uh, most of these and all of that. And that's where sometimes we're wondering, how will we survive? Because everybody trying to do that on their own. So it becomes harder for us. Sister Candy, you still there? Yes, I'm still there. Do you have a question? No, I just had that, co that um, comment. Because you find you find um there are so many different small 
segments of Church of God because everybody wants to be a leader. You you in one small area and there are like three churches mm -hmm. because everybody wants to be a leader. So I was just thinking if you know the younger ministers could be taught before they're ordained, then maybe that would help. It, it, it's supposed to be. During my tenure as general office, general of the overseer, what I did when you present somebody to me, I have to interview them concerning the doctrine and know what they know about the doctrine because I have before I approve it. That was my work. I didn't do character. Character was based coming from the person who recommends you, but a general knowledge of the doctrine the Church of God was mine to test. If I know that there may be a necessity where you are, okay, by calling it a necessity, the field where you are working on is about 20, 40 miles away, no minister close. They have to look for a transportation and there's a brother who's capable, though not perfect, I would have assist them in getting them to do that. But it would be up to the work of the general of us here to continue the teaching. I would tell them where they fail, what they lack of, or where they fall short, then it would be yours to go ahead and do that. But I don't know how it's being done today. But as general of us here, it is your duty to go through the general knowledge of doctrinal beliefs, scriptures. And there are so many scriptures in there that when somebody quote it, You've been hearing it for a good while, and we don't know. We don't know. We had a mixed scripture in our lesson this morning. Psalms 120, verse 2. And I said, hey, Michael, should you open the can of worm or let it go? And I said, let it go. You know? Huh? That again? Psalms 120, verse 2. Deliver my soul. No. That's not what it is. Psalms 120. Huh? Deliver my soul from lying lips and from a deceitful tongue. We took the wrong course with that verse. That was not David personal, but from people who come in towards me with lying tongue and deceitful. But not David saying, protect my tongue, not my lips. It, was, it wasn't that way. You know. It may sound close or the same, but he's asking God to deliver me from what? From the lying lip. And uh, from those with deceitful tongues. Was, was what David had in mind when he put it there. But like I said, there are times you have to let it go. Instead of always standing up and, and do that. But it's a very good prayer we should think of because while you are living at peace, somebody is hatching something to bring up against you. And it was up to David to say, the Lord, you did save my soul from that thing because they are all around us. So we, like as I say, if you make your bed in the Bible, we'll do good. Till I come, give attendance to doctrine. Give attendance to reading. Give attendance to do that. That's what Paul asks the people to give attention to. And so our young generation, a minister should not stop study because he become a minister. His study should just begin because he must be prepared to give an answer to anybody who asks. So why should your study stop because you become a minister? Why should you believe you all the way at the top just because you make it to minister when you just start to climb? No, it, was, it should never be like that. Yes, go ahead. Oh. Go ahead, let me hear you, my sister. So I wanted to ask you a question. Uh, How are you okay. feeling today? I'm feeling okay. Okay, go ahead. So I wanted to ask you a question about Jesus' mother, Mary. When the time comes for for judgment on everyone, does she have to be judged too? Yes, Mama. Everyone will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Not for the same reason 
The righteous will not come into condemnation, but he has to stand there for his reward. Let me do that again. While the wicked may stand for their judgment and sentence, the righteous will still have to appear for his reward. But they will not come into condemnation, because while they was alive, they have passed through life to death. So they will not come to condemnation. But as of we all must appear, in Romans 14 said, we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Mary will be there, though I strongly believe the Lord already saved her. Her name is written in glory. She deserved it, and she did everything. But as everybody else, she depended on salvation to be delivered. Everything was based on the Son to do that. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Blessed the thou among women. Indeed, she was blessed. She trade in her body and forsake the marriage, but sacrifice her body to God so that he could have his own way. Shouldn't God remember her? These are the sacrifices that pays well in the sight of God. They are very good sacrifices. And she said, look when, my soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit shall rejoice in God my Savior. He that is mighty have done great things, and holy is his name. He have regarded the low estate of his handmaid, and behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. Can't take it. It may be prophetic. But she worth every bit of it. He regarded the low estate. He didn't go to the palace. He didn't go to the sanctuary. He didn't go away. He met a young woman on the road and raised her up to the standard to become the mother of his child. That's the joy of a good life in the presence of God. That's what you call joy. And while she go, while many may be mocking at her, you get pregnant for... You mean this baby you're talking about? Of course it's that baby. That baby will die for your sin tomorrow. That was a joy. But Mary pondered this thing in her heart. Became a strong follower of her son. Never left by his side, even while he was on the cross. That was Mary. So when somebody said, Blessed Mary or Blessed Virgin Mary, Nobody have any query about that. The Catholics say she was ever a virgin. You could debate that. But Mary worth the blessings that she received. Behold, from now on, all generations shall call me blessed. Through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, she said that. Who am I to doubt it? Who am I to fight it? Who am I to say otherwise? So I, I just pray God some of these things we are hearing. I don't like the Catholic. But I can't say I don't like what it is because it's inspired by God. You can't do nothing about it. Hmm? That's a prayer. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Can God really... Well, it is a prayer that was formed by the Roman Catholic. So... It would have been by the words that they use would be abominable even in God's sight. Mary will not, but those who put it in practice will when they say it. And Mary didn't ask them. We were taught it was the angel Gabriel and uh, who would that give us the first part of the Hail Mary. When he said, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou among women and blessed is the fruit. Gabriel said that. And the Catholic put it in the Hail Mary. <laughs> Is it wrong? That's the same way. That's the way Gabriel addressed her. Hail Mary. Blessed are thou but among women. He didn't say mother of God, pray for us sinners. No, he never yes. said mother. Mary, Mary is recognized as the mother of God 
among other religions more than Catholic as well, because they claim that Jesus is the same God. So if Jesus is the same God and Mary is the mother of Jesus, why can't she be the mother of God if they are the same? Eh? <laughs> exactly. When a woman becomes his mother, he's not divine. Something is wrong. If God had to be born of the flesh, something is missing. So the world needs to stand up again and ask themselves a lot of questions. No, they're probably trying to hear you. Can you please use the mic, brother? Yeah. They refer to as the one who gave you birth. So that I mean, there's a lot. Right now, they say that God has no gender. Then, huh? <laughs> you know, so... They're bringing him right to the LGBTQTW they have now. They want to make God the head of that. The world is in trouble. Right. So, so false doctrine or false teaching is on the rise um, uh, uh, more than ever before. And, and a lot of it is coming out of the... Uh... Say that again? Yes, could be. That might be right. Because if he is king over several countries, and it, has, it was once said that the sun never set on the British Empire. From India way through Africa was the British Empire. Right. So they were, he were king, they were kings and queens over all these places, take orders from them. So they will be king of kings because they are king under them. No, but because Lord is a title, is that they can be well, you know, you have many lords, they have house of lords in right. England and all. They, they, the word yeah, Lord is not a um, What they're actually doing there is to confer this title on him and have his subjects globally acknowledge him as king of kings. That may not be true. Lord of Nebuchadnezzar, king of kings unto the people. These titles have been there way before Christ come. What, what? Say that again. Worshipping of kings, Herod died because of that and many others, Antiochus, Epiphany. Many others suffer the consequence when they take the name of God in vain. I will not give my glory to another. Let him try to exercise it. He will see what the consequence is. So here's but it's not that it has not been done before. Who, who has more authority? King of England or the Pope of Rome? Say that again? Who has the higher authority? The today king the king... Or the Pope of Rome? No, today they're on special pages. They are not on the same page. Because the Pope of Rome run his dominion, domain, and the King of England reign over his. Right. So one is running the country and one is running the church. Oh. And both, both is global in, in reach. Uh, uh, uh. None of them are, none of them now have the global authority. The Pope may have more global authority than the King. So if the king is subject to the pope, what? No, he's not. He's not, my dear. Well, they were one time in history, but not today. Since church and state has been broken since 1798, they are no longer under that. So that's what I'm asking. Are we seeing um, a uh, re, uh, 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 re emergence of church and state, the global 
church and spirituality. Where am I? Should I do that today? Should I do that today, Lord? Let me take you to somewhere, my brother. Let me take you to bed. Revelation chapter 2. I, 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 really, I really didn't want to go into to all these, but I'm not going to stay there, but I could always go back there. This chapter 2. The 12 or 17, 12. Next to chapter 12, 17. I, I, I don't know exactly what it is, but it is 17. Revelation 17. Well, I gave it chapter 17. Dragon is 12, right? And Dragon, chapter 17. No, chapter 17. Chapter 17. Seven, 17 is a 7. Huh? It's the same prophecy, yeah? Yeah. But let me take it halfway. Let, let's do 14. 14 to 18. 17, 14 to 18. Let's, let's play a little bit. They, they, they are hidden, David. They are still in the middle. These shall make from verse 14, Revelation mm -hmm. 17, from 14 to 18. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. 15. And he, and he said, Unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. 17. For God has put in their hearts to fulfill his will, and to agree to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. Eating and appointed. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over kings, the, over the kings of the earth. See? You read it, you read it as something you wanted to finish with. You started to finish with it. Did you comb the verses as you read? Well, uh, uh, Put it back up effectively, if you look at the last verse, based on the question I was asking. 17. Give okay. me 17. For God has put in their hearts. Oh, no. Give me 16 and 17. Okay. Take your time. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore. Who is that whore? The, the, the false church. Go ahead. And shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Will she be there at the end if they burn her with fire? So is she gonna lose her seat? All right. Look, again. Look at it again. She's gonna lose her if, seat and authority. So then what would happen to her? Losing her seat, losing her power, losing her authority, rendered helpless. So we're looking for a greater power stronger than the Roman Catholic. We're looking for a greater power stronger than the Roman Catholic. Maybe but, the World but, Council of Churches, yes, maybe but, something. But if you look at 18 now, it says, and yes. the woman which thou sawest mm -hmm. is that great city mm -hmm. which reigned over, over the kings, kings of the earth. The kings of the earth. But the king burned her. So for a time. They, they burned her with fire. Yes. So for a time, it, 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 that uh, power will reign over kings. Well, she runs rain, but when you come to the end of the time, she's not there. God has put it within their heart to burn her and destroy her and kill her with fire. So there is a force coming up against her to destroy her. Look at it again. So, Very so, good. So the woman needs the support of the beast. Say that again. The woman needs the support. The woman rides the, the scarlet colored beast. Church and state united. Yeah. 
woman represents the church and the beast represents the state. Yeah. So she exercises all the power of the states. Right. But here we are seeing something happen that all the kings getting up against her gang up together to destroy her. Mm -hmm. So isn't she in trouble? She's in trouble. Should we still afraid of her at the end but, of time? But the, the, the trouble, she, she's going to cause, uh, she's the great whore, right? And she's going to, uh, and she's going to cause all her daughters, mother of harlots, she's going to cause all the other harlots to worship and to bow on the subject. She can do all that, but her time is limited. Right. But she for will a time. be consumed, destroy and burn. So for a time. So no, if not if you so, consume. So if we think of the three and a half years or the forty and two months. Say that again. If we conclude that to include the um forty and two months of tribulation, right? Mm -hmm. That might be her time when she will exercise that power over the beast or the nations okay and after that her demise will be evident okay will can she regroup will she regroup no you're talking about the, the deadly wound that was healed no from the beast we, we talk that okay you're talking about the period of time time dividing of time yes okay that's 1260 or 40 months yes or three and a half years three and a half that is mentioned many places in our bible yeah Started from 538 AD till the year of 1798, when Napoleon Bonaparte banished Pope Pius VI on the Isle of Patmos. Right. Two years earlier, he tried to excommunicate Bonaparte from the faith. Then Bonaparte turned back after him and took off his seat, the right. deadly wound, right. excommunicated him, deported him. Then church and state was broken. Right. The church had no more power over the states. Right. Yeah, I remember that one. Right. So right, so we have that in the past. Uh, um, is it dual in the sense that we are going to repeat? The question is, will it come back? Yes. This is the reading we have. Where? Revelation. And in the days of these kings, uh, Daniel seven. Daniel seven. Read it again. And in Daniel 9.27, Daniel's, is it 9? No, not 9.27. Daniel 7.24, Daniel 4.27, Daniel, one of them that have it. In the days of this king is Daniel's, either 4 or 7. Yeah, I know, no, I know the, the verses, but I'm trying to pick up the scripture. Huh? 2.44? Oh, okay. 44, okay. I know there were so many of them up there. Rick at it and read it. You can read it anytime you have it. Anybody outside want to read for me today? Candy, Sister Nikisha, Anna, where are you? Daniel, Daniel 244. Yeah. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That's not the Catholic, my brother. That's not the Catholic. In the days of these ten kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. The Roman Catholic is not in charge. In the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Not when they are gone. While they are in power, God, Jesus Christ, returned to set up his kingdom, which shall never be moved. That's not the Roman Catholic. Just look at it again, my young son. Just look at it again. It's all over, but you've got to know how to patch it. Like a rhinoceros. Their suit looks like something a tailor make. When you look at their skin, it's like a tailor cut that. So would that be um, Europe? Ten kings coming from Europe. Our eyes are still open on whether we see NATO or the United Nations. Our eyes still look in that direction. With NATO expanding and conquering all the islands of Europe, that was the former Soviet Union territory. No one knows what's coming out of that. 
So what was but the your... establishment of the kingdom would be in the days of these kings. So, okay. They must be in power for Christ to return. Right. So would we consider Europe as the original territory of well, um, Rome? Almost all Europe was considered as part of Rome. That's very good. Because they had all their kings settled around Rome. The only country that gave them the most problem was England. Junior Caesar attempted to conquer England in 44 BC. Failed. Pompey tried. They didn't. Augustus came by water. He probably did. Caesar tried it the same. Quite a lot had problem. But Claudius, Julius, probably, but they could not hold it on. Vikings, the days, mm -hmm. rolled in, drove in, drove them away. A years war reign over Great Britain before Rome could have set its foot. Neither it's not sure whether Rome ever stayed long, though England became was one of the ten toes, Anglo-Saxon. But yet there is not much history of how long Rome was able to hold on to Anglo-Saxon. They may be the one who give the most problem. I have a question on the jewels. Okay, Go ahead. seeing that the woman hmm? is going to seeing that the woman is going to be destroyed by the ten kings in Revelation seventeen. Is that correct? Let me let me pull it up. Hold on. No, no, I didn't say it. That's what I read. Okay. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Okay. That's a good, so, that's a total destruction. Yeah, you eat so, her flesh, you burn it with fire. So these ten kings are going to decimate the, um, the papal Rome. Is that correct? Say that again. The ten kings are going to decimate the papal Rome. Okay, we're doing good. Now, after the papal Rome has been destroyed, would they would this pave the way for um the antichrist what do you mean antichrist was there from the days of the apostle there's not one man named antichrist okay what i mean antichrist is... was there john said that in his writing the letters antichrist is already here okay what and I every mean spirit is... that confesses not that jesus is born of god is the spirit of antichrist Okay, what I mean they is... They have been there that long. You know, the, the, the part in Revelation, we talked about the false prophet. There's uh, no Antichrist in that revelation. The beast was taken. Okay, that's what I meant. the false prophet. No Antichrist. Okay, there. that's what I meant, the false prophet. The false prophet. So you've got to be very careful. And that trio you, right there. I mean, religions that keep telling us what they want, but Revelation tell us about those who were taken to the... The beast was taken, and with him, the false prophet. There's nothing like an Antichrist taken there. Okay, so that's the question I, I originally wanted to ask. After papal Rome has been destroyed, does that pave the way for the um, false prophets and all these other... Um, because the empire was never papal Rome. It was always pagan Rome. Rome had no pope when they begin to reign. Pope creep in from under Constantine, although they said no, St. Peter was the first pope. I don't know where it is, but that popery thing was not there. Although we may find in history, earlier than that, I think the second century, I remember giving you all a document with all the popes that reign from the second century. You remember how you all do that? No. I... All the popes that reign, the year they reign, and how long they reign, until the last one I had was the dragon. Who was it? Um, John Paul VI. The longest reigning pope that he had. Yet he died of Parkinson. So there, there, there has been quite a leg. Again, I'm saying, you patch prophecy. Here a little, there a little, this upon line upon line, precepts upon precept. If you could patch them, you may not be accurate or excellent, but you're close enough that somebody could add the pieces. It's a jigsaw puzzle. Somebody could fit in the pieces to have a complete thing. But everything that needed may call for a coming together. What I did not notice, what I did not know, what I didn't observe, somebody with it is coming, we put it together. And that's what the church needs. 
So, so the question is, Allah Jules, after PayPal Rome has been destroyed by the Ten Kings, and they're going to set up the system to worship the beast and his image, is that will happen after, is that correct? After the destruction of the woman. Yes, that's, yeah. that's what I'm asking. Yeah. So that's a sign for us to look for, you would say? Well, that, that would lead back to the mark of the beast, which we had a, a while ago. But if you notice the beast in Revelation 13, two different identities. One was with ten horns, by day it reached seven horns. But notice carefully that beast that is there. One of them may be a human, one of them may be a country. I need you all to go back and look at it. So people just, just don't jump and interpret the prophecy how they want. The dragon gave her power to the beast. That's what they said. And some wise preachers say, America give the Pope the power. My father, which is in heaven. And then the beast exercised all the power of the dragon. What power America had before giving it to the beast? Find the beast. What power did America had before that the beast could exercise? Anyway, I'm not prepared to do all that. Just a thought to think of when you first what is it? It's gone. Like I said, if you're going to deal with prophecy, it's going to take time. Take a day, take a night, take a week. Let's go straight into it. And I beheld another beast coming out from the earth. I was looking for him. No. No. Is the beast the first beast, the second? Put him as the second. It's another beast. If it is another beast, it's not the same as the first. So which one of them was the first beast? He exercised all the power of the beast that was before him. So if you and, and cause the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. What is that saying to us? The papal rule. Which beast that gives people room power? Say that again. Napoleon took away his power. He didn't give him. So which beast that gave people room the power? Amer uh, I for sure America was not there. Right. So um, Constantine <laughs> gave power to the Pope. He started. The Catholic Church start growing while after the death of Constantine, not while he make Rome a Christian city. He proclaimed Rome to be a Christian city. Christianity enjoyed the best peace under Constantine. Right. So Pope, a Pope back then had no real power. Right? You, you know, but notice somebody gave the power to the Pope. So that cannot be America because there was no America no, there. Was no then. America. So that be how does that be fit America in their prophecy? So somebody, some ruler um, that have global standing gave that power to poor priests. You know, we have pagan room, papal room. Yeah. Pagan room yield the power to papal room. Paper room. The Pope exercised more authority when they became consulars of the pagan empire Very good. after the division. So then they were able to squeeze and had even more power than the kings themselves. Right. The king of Germany had to bow and kneel, creep on his knees before the Pope to secure his seat. That is that much power they had then. Will this power be given to them again? God knows. We may be looking for it as though history will repeat itself. Only the histories that have a twofold, there's that. But if it's not about twofold meaning, it will not repeat itself. Not in the same way that the world is looking for that.
So, Brother Ricketts, I wish you had a tape recorder and take all your notes. <laughs> yeah, I wish to. Eh? Are you putting it on YouTube? Take your notes and we can always examine them again. Maybe a lot of pastors will call me on that because I didn't go all the way. I kept back some, hoping they will. They want more, they call. That's what you do when you're watching with a, a movie. A commercial caught in, and as he do the gun that, it caught off. So tomorrow afternoon, you sit early to see if you shoot. All the soap operas. Hey, he has the knife. He's going to kill her. Wait, wait, wait. Come, come. It cut off. Tomorrow, before the statue, they're watching if she's going to die. Leaving them to want more. That's the object of soap opera. So all your time is being wasted. Never caught off at a dull moment. Something they're hoping you'll come back to see the finished point. Go ahead. It is an assumption that the America is a lamb-like beast because of the two political power. But that is yet to be proven. What do we do if another political power arise out of America in the latter days? Will it still be the lamb? Because they say he has two horns and speak like a dragon. Two political powers since the foundation. But I remember Ross Perot tried as an independent. He failed presidency as an independent. Many others have tried to raise up an independent party. It has not succeeded. Does that mean there'll never be an independent? America is, well, look, even the Democrat is divided. Republican is divided. It's not going to be a surprise if a third party arrives. If one beast have two horns, it can be because so was the he-goat. So was the ram mid and Porsche. So I may not so because the mid and Porsche appear with the two horns. Yeah. But the Greek goat had two, but it was one Alexander the Great. And, and so on. So like I said, a good study of possibly it could be two strong nations join hands together to do that. I am not denying it. Although I'm May not be, I have not given it a great thought to confirm it as two nations, but we may not deny it instead of one nation with a too strong power. This nation has never ruled the world. And that lamb like beast has never ruled the world. And believe me, it is in trouble today from inside out. If they can match to try to overtake the White House, <laughs> Anything, anything is possible later as you hear. I simply want to teach that there will not be a United States in a few years to come. The states are going to declare independent. They will declare independent. Texas have tried it, some others have. The Civil War we had, well, they had it, had a lot to do with that and so on. I. I tend to believe that some states will attempt to be independent from the Fed. Will it still be a united state? I'm not too ready to believe it's going to be. To me, because I cannot find them in prophecy for the end of time. So I may want to believe that they will demolish, go through some great pain. Hawaii is raging, saying that they never agreed to become a state. But those who live there agreed and make them states without their consent. So even Hawaii wants to be independent from the states now. We, we, we don't know. We're listening to the roaring going on all over. Hopefully we'll get some answers as we wait patiently for full main democracy. So I, I really i am not fighting the lamb-like beast as being America. But I'm too ready, not too ready to confirm it as the two political party that arise from America. I'm not too sure. Phil. Brother Jagru. I'm here, Elegy. Tell Daddy what you need. What are you looking for again? No, I mean, I, was... <laughs> I think that's what we were taught, right? That's what we were taught. Yeah, and exactly. until it changed, we'll still teach that. 
Yes, exactly. No, I, I mean, I was listening. I'm I was not just... you alone. I learned it that way, but I went and looked at it. If there's a possibility, it might not be true. That's the only different thing. I didn't stick to what he teach me. I went back over it and see whether those things were so. <laughs> According yeah. to Paul, and a lot of them, I find it, there were no truth in them. And even those that were true was not the whole truth. Okay, Phil? Yeah. So I'm not telling you don't teach it. But Daddy is saying he's no longer convinced. Based on why I see the United States in the future, I really do not. I saw the kings of the East, China, so Gog and Magog, I saw some. But the United States as a nation, no. As what? No. I don't see them. Yeah, because one of the main reasons why, um, and we were just talking about like paper Rome, and pagan Rome. Mm -hmm. One of the main reasons why, and you taught us this growing up, is that um, they introduced paganism when they overran Israel. And that way, people were not able to distinguish between, you know, what is a pagan God and what actually is the right thing to do. So the reason why they ended up getting so big is because they incorporated all of their pagan beliefs into the church and it slowly crept in and people just accepted it after a period of time. Well, it is the truth. About 80% of the rule of the world that was colonized by Rome with a cross, an image, or that, who then they say become Christianity. It was Rome who introduced the way cross of Calvary and all saying that they, but they went there with a the thought to introduce God, to introduce Christ to a nation who had not known God. But they had other motive. Because when the pilgrim went in to assist Israel against the Turk, the pilgrim went in with one intention to look for Solomon's mind, the gold for Solomon. So while you believe they're helping you in Christianity, at night they work digging gold. <laughs> Look at our history, what it has turned to be, and what we're reading. Whatever you think it was, another reason is coming out to do that. World War II, it was said that the Roman Catholic help the Jews. Yet two of Hitler generals became Pope, Pius VI and John XXIII. Two of Hitler general became Pope. Why did the Pope interfere? It's to cover their fault, so that they may not know that Hitler was organized by the Pope. They would not know the chief agent who was behind Adolf Hitler. What was it going on? The hatred for the Jews maybe have been a long, long time before Hitler ever showed up. There are a lot of things we have heard. It's not like that, my brother. Coverage to a lot of the um, Gestapo troops, stormtroopers, uh, send them into Brazil, Argentina, all over. All of these with great coverage? Yeah. Where in the Caribbean you think has more black people than Brazil? Nowhere. Why did they focus on Brazil? They have a time. Even most of the sheep that were traveling, they hunt them down if they fall on another island. Brazil was the aim of the gold. The Pope that we have here, Jorge Boguglio, comes from Argentina. But his work was extended far as there. Who was he? A Jesuit. Can a Jesuit become Pope? No. Because Jesuit is not coming from a Catholic order. OBE, Order of St. Benedict, FMI, Family of Mary Immaculate, of which are the other ranks that they have, is from these ranks Pope came out. But the Jesuit who was the war lord of the Roman Catholic, make it to the Pope. What can we say? Maybe the time is near, God have his way. What do we look? Trying to change, he was the first to open, accept gay and all of that. He was not like that when he was archbishop. There it is. I remember the name of Archbishop Abel Miseroy of South Africa came up during an election of Pope, was it Pope Paul the first or the second? But they quickly sweep that on the feet. They were not ready for a black pope. 
as they're ready for a black president. Yet in the history of the Pope said they had already two black. England already had four black kings. America is on the fourth black president. Wow. What is in our history that we don't know? Abraham Lincoln never denied his spirit. His father was black. Check the books. Check their descendant. Check their blood type. Huh? All the writings concerning um, Lincoln is that he was a tall, he was a black, black man. man. But because of his high color, they accept him as white. But the black blood was there. Say that again. There was four of them. I remember Lincoln, I remember Obama, but there was two before else before Obama. Yeah. England had about four or five black kings too. From England. England is like America. England is a build-up from German and France. England original was Anglo-Saxon. Falls on the Great Britain before they become the United Kingdom. So they had kings from Germany, from there, from there, intermarried with all that gave us. Even the king, the, the, the dynasty we have now is by default. Because Edward VIII was supposed to be king, but he gave up the throne to marry a divorcee. So his brother, King George, took over. So the family of King George now reigning instead of the family of Edward VIII. That keep popping up. Who, who is the right to the throne? Is it Edward VIII for King George VI who took it over? George died, give it to Elizabeth. Elizabeth reigned for 70 years, give it to Charles. The children of Edward was cast aside. How did they do the selection? Was it the children of Edward that was supposed to be crowned after he set aside, or why his brother? There are so many lineage of the kings that are in problem. We do not know all. We just accept what they teach us, what we think we know. When will we know the truth and the whole truth? We don't. Huh? Nothing, but the truth. Nothing but, but it's all out there. It's all out there. But let's pray, God, we, the children of God, can continue our study with the word of God. Let them do what they have to do and focus on what Christ tells us, that we can teach the word of God without mistake. Workman needeth not a shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's how you've been approved by God, when you rightly dividing the word of truth. It is not easy, but it can be done. It can be done. Young men need to give themselves more to the word of God. You were young, you can learn. The brain can store. The memory can expand. Not when you become old to say do that. Only the long range memory. I don't even remember what I ate for breakfast. But I remember things happened when I was two years old. I can relate it. Two years old, I can relate it. But ask me what I ate for breakfast yesterday or today. No idea. Uh -huh. And like I said, it, it is hard to think about these things sometimes. But if you keep at it over and over, it will not go. Like I say, it stayed there because it became a habit. It's in the subconscious mind. But most things we do came from subconscious and not conscious. We may not even be aware we're doing it. We do. It's like somebody says, I said, hey, I noticed you sucking your tongue. You saw that? I didn't even know I was doing it. But they're doing it. Because it's not coming from the conscious mind. They're not fully aware. We drive with the subconscious mind. We answer other things with subconscious mind, not with the conscious mind. But we're so used to it that we can do them. We need to wake up and start to be conscious of this, that where we are, where about what we see. Like as I said to the young ones, do not say what your mind tells you to say, but tell your mind what you want to say. The day you learn to master that, you'll be good. Don't do what your mind tells you to do.
tell your mind what you want to do. The day you learn to master that, life will change. Some say eligible sits at because your mind tells you what to do, it's in the subconscious mind. Something you're accustomed of doing over and over that may never get good results. Sit down, plan, and think. I say, no, I'm not going to do that. God wants me to do it this way. I'm going to do it that way. You cannot fail. Cannot fail. Again, my young sisters over there, I wanted to open a brief class about the daughters of Zion, our value, how God sees us, what God has in store, what role will we play. Because I remember Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. And as make us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And a sister say, what about the women? Will they be nuns? I don't know. Are there kings and priests? Will there be queen and nuns? There'll be no gender. At the resurrection, the kingdom of the kingdom are not married, neither divorced. But they, are, they are going to be like angels, non-gender. No need to reproduce, no need for genders. So we may be worried about whether the man will be the man, the woman will be the, the woman. Gender change. You have a different body, different composition. No need to worry about who will build houses, who will feed you whether you still have to marry so you could get food, nothing like that. Somebody already paid the price for the ticket. Somebody prepared a mansion, the home where you're going to stay, your light bill, you don't need it. Somebody shining their light on you, nothing to worry about. You don't need nothing from this world to where you're going, except one, love. The love that takes you to the kingdom will always be there. Whether there be prophecy, they will be filled. Whether there be knowledge, they will fail. The charity goes. Love will go beyond into a place where we love one another as brethren. No matter what the situation is, not judge one another wrongly. Pure in heart is all that is there. No false accusers. Love is the only thing that's taken us beyond the world. Well, again, we spent some minute of time. It's almost 7 o'clock. It's after 7? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So sad. So sad that the time comes and goes. Is it that much after 7? But it's only set yet. It is written in the book. It is written in the book of Acts. After the Sabbath, Paul preached until midnight. So, if any minister would tell you when you preach a Sabbath, you're preaching on Sunday, don't know his scripture. He doesn't know his scripture. Paul preached until midnight, ready to depart on the morrow, to make sure that it was not Sunday morning. It was the end of Sabbath night, until the morrow. When you took us fall and died. But some said, no, Paul meet on the first day of the week to preach and our Sunday morning. Come on. Of course it was Sunday because sunset Sabbath. It's Sunday begin. The dark part. Say that again. With a what? But then you won't be able to eat. Oh, I already put bathroom there with hot water. So you don't have to go home. It's okay. Like I said, I would be more interesting to see the young ones take it over from me. I would be more interesting to see the young ones take yeah. it over. I may sit down and listen and guide. I used to, I used to take all the mothers. Deacon, um, Brother Sweetbert, Raymond, all of them. We go by the sea in Frederickstead up to 2 o'clock in the morning. To 3 o'clock in the morning. And believe me, I was part, probably the youngest one among them. Probably was the youngest. He was already a deacon. I was the, the man who ordained me as a minister. I was his teacher. 
I was his teacher. But I didn't find it a problem when they ordained him as an elder. He didn't do nothing to our relationship. He made me a minister. He did nothing. They appointed me general of us here, and he was glad he clapped. Nothing never penetrated the friendship. Beloved, I am saying that to every one of you. You cannot make friends. You find a good friend. I say it again. You cannot make friends. You find a good friend. They came with all the quality. When somebody trying to make a friend out of you, they're trying to adjust you to suit their ways and attitude. But when you find a friend with like-minded, like attitude, that lasts forever. Always think about that. If you could seek a friend until tomorrow, yeah. you may never get through. You never materialize. As they come in with their own ways, you want to override your decision, tell you what you should do, can do, or cannot do. That's not a friend. Friend is one who respects your opinion. I don't like it, but if that's what you want, I respect it. There's not much of that in our society today. So until then, we become brothers, sisters, children of God, and do the best that we can. Again, my beloved, we will always be there. You can always hear our voice on Saturday afternoon. And the good thing, you're not too far to ask your question or participate or give your thought or bring more members from your congregation. You could bring Elder Davey. I would be glad to. We have to set it up. Set it up. Uh, yeah, you probably will. Okay. You could give them my love. I follow them. The only thing I was trying to figure out, why Church of God, why Seventh-day Church of God number one? I'm looking at the number one that's behind it. Registration? Okay. I understand. You have to add something to it. Yeah, because there were orders registered before. I understand that. I understand. Huh? You know what? You can do that. No, we have to greet them and let them know. Don't cut it up, bro. Yes, my dear. Good night. Sister Anna, good night. I fell asleep on you. I'm sorry. That again? I fell asleep on you today. I know. Maybe you work hard. No, I just had a lot going on. Um, my of a laboring man is sweet. It's sweet. <laughs> but I, I, woke, I woke up and I had a good amount of listening. I just wanted to ask you, next week is the study for women, you say? I want to touch our women, especially our young ones. And I want okay. to share the thought of the experience, what they had to go through before they become mature in the faith. Okay. I want them to share it not for my sake. But other young ones who may be going through the same thing may know what it is all about. Okay. And at the same time, while we counsel them what to avoid, what to look out for, what they should never allow entered into their life. Okay. Okay, thanks. Good night, Reverend. Yeah, I want to focus on that very much because it is needed. When you leave them without guidance, they ought to they tend to do what they want or they think like how they like. But if there is somebody, a sister, ageable one, they could rely on. Because the gap between adult and youth is yet to be bridged. They are opening wider. The youths don't come close because we don't trust one another. We don't respect them because they are younger than us. We feel we could tell them what we want. That gap has to bridge. Though they are younger, they're still your sister. God hold them equal and give you the duty to teach them to become. That gap has to close. Okay, well, beloved, I will see you all again if it is the will of God next week to the honor and glory of God. Amen. We will dismiss in prayer. Anyone can dismiss us in prayer by the honor and glory of God. But Eric, you could offer your prayer. You can use the mic, but the day we still want to hear you. Let us pray.
Our God and our Father, the yes, God Lord. of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord, we thank you for this moment, this hour. We thank you for elder Jews and all the ministers who are gathered here. Also those who are online, we thank you for the participation, for the questions that were asked, for the answers that were given. Lord, we hope and pray, oh God, that someone has been edified, someone has received a blessing from what we have shared here tonight. In your name and in your presence, Lord. We just want to honor you and to give glory to your matchless name. Help us to retain the things that we have learned, Lord, that we may be able to share them in the future with someone who needs to know, have a question and need an answer. We ask, oh Lord, God, that you continue to bless yes, us, Lord. especially our teacher, elder Jews. Give him strength, Lord God, and um, touch him, anoint him in a special way, Lord, because um, we need more teachers like him uh, to share the word, oh God, and to answer difficult questions, dear Lord God. Help us, Lord God. Bring us together. Add to the churches, oh God. Teachers sent from you, praise God. True teachers. You promised to send true pastors, oh God, into the flock, oh God, before the time of harvest. So we ask, Lord God, to have mercy and compassion upon us, dear God. And let your anointing go forth, Lord, because we have so much work to do. You said that the harvest is truly great and it's white, but the laborers are few. So we pray, oh God, that you would send reinforcement from heaven, that we will be able to do the work and to accomplish the work in the time appointed. As we are about to depart, we ask for journeying mercies, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Bless the word of our mouth and everything that our hand, we extend our hands to do. Help us to do it with a willing heart and with all our might. As you said to Joshua, be thou strong and be of good courage, praise God. And I will be with you as I was with Moses. Be with us, Lord God, as you have been with the prophets of old. These mercies and these favors we do ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. We say, may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the love of God, God fellowship Christ. of the Holy Christ. Spirit, rest, rest remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. May God richly bless you all. Thanks for attending. Good night. Good night, my dear. Bye. Bye. Sister Anna, I was in church today. No, Ella, I was home. My daughter was sick from first day. She was in the emergency room. Yeah, I asked yeah. her how she's doing. She told me, well, fine. Well, she's doing better this afternoon because her fever break. But okay. other than that, it's, it's been a rough couple of nights. Okay. Okay, then. All right, then. I'll talk to you later. Take care of yourself, my dear. I will. Mm -hmm.